Your extracurricular activities are enjoyable, but they could be magical. Get the heightened tingle in all the right places with Chingling. It's the better sex pill for husbands, wives, entanglements that make your sexual experience spectacular. Nice to end too early or mornings that aren't as vigorous? Chingling, baby. Put a little get up, stay up, and go harder in the bedroom where it counts. Why be good when you can be great? Make your love life magical and order yours today at Chingabrands.com. That's C-H-I-N-G-A Brands.com. A draft opinion is suggesting the Supreme Court will overturn Roe v. Wade. That from a report published Monday night in Politico. The draft, reportedly signed by Justice Samuel Alito, includes a statement that Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. In effect, the opinion claims there is no constitutional right to abortion and individual states have the right to more heavily regulate or outright ban the procedure. The court is expected to rule on the case before its term is up in late June or early July. Overwhelming majority of Americans say they support Ukraine as well as increased sanctions against Moscow. A poll from the Washington Post and ABC News showed that 76% of Americans said that the U.S. should provide more humanitarian aid to Ukraine. 67% said that the U.S. should increase economic sanctions on Russia beyond those already in place. Still, most Americans, or 72 percent, oppose the U.S. taking direct military action against Russian forces in Ukraine. Of the 21 percent who said that the U.S. should take direct military action, 71 percent said that that should be the case even if it risks a nuclear war. Bernie Bennett reporting. Also at SRNNews.com, the Biden administration is allocating more than $3 billion to finance electric vehicle battery Manufacturing, Greg Clugston reports. The latest funding from the bipartisan infrastructure bill will help establish and retrofit battery factories. The Energy Department says the money also will go toward processing minerals for use in large capacity batteries and recycling those batteries. President Biden's electric vehicles push is aimed at reducing carbon emissions as well as boosting union manufacturing jobs in key election battleground states. Greg Clugston, the White House. And this is SRN News. People of faith simply do not need those self-help books. A new study released by Duke University's Fuqua School of Business indicates that if you have a strong relationship with God, you are less likely to spend money in the burgeoning $10 billion self-help industry. Duke has released a statement saying, quote, What we found is that when people are thinking about God, they have a sense that they are loved for exactly who they are, making them not as interested in self-improvement products. Michael Harrington, SRN News. Some 60 human rights groups signing a letter to the United Nations. Later this month, U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights will be going to China, and the signatories want her to say something to the communist leadership about their ongoing persecution of Christians and other religious minorities throughout China. This is SRN News. Bipartisan group of senators calling on the Biden administration to speed up its probe of solar components being manufactured in many Asian countries. Bob Agnew reports. The administration announced in March it was investigating solar panel components being constructed in Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. The Commerce Department fears China may be using proxy manufacturers there to bypass tariffs. That's not the concern, however, of more than two dozen senators who signed a letter written by Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen. Their concern is that imposing tariffs now could delay the president's plan for solar installations and cost up to 100,000 jobs in the solar industry. Bob Agnew reporting. Wall Street numbers for Monday. The Dow was up 84 points. S&P 500 gained 23. And NASDAQ climbed 201 points. More details at srnnews.com. WQE 99.1 FM Noonan. WBRQ LaGrange. WZV 90.5 FM Lionville. JC Sports Networks. Hi, I'm Tracy Brooks. I'm the owner of Great Style Salon, located next to the Little Giants Grocery Store at 487 Jackson Street, right off of 29. Our hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Fridays, we're open from 12 noon until 4. Saturday, Saturdays were open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
Please come check us out. We specialize in hair cutting and great scalp massages. And right now I'm looking to hire two great hairstylists. Come check me out. Tune in Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 1030 to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show hosted by me, Ariel Green. Each week, we'll learn ways to be more sustainable in our everyday lives. We'll discuss exciting environmental news, ways to get involved locally, and we'll hear from women of color who are saving the planet in their own unique ways. Be sure to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show every Thursday at 10 a.m. I'm Dr. Lewis Boynton, and please join us here on Health, Happiness, and Harmony a show in which we explore the outer reaches of the psychological world in order to help you find peace, prosperity, and a sound, healthy life. Join us here on WQEE 99.1. The place where this is Joseph Reed with Singing News Radio. We're partnering with Bible League to send God's word to the persecuted churches around the world. Here's Michael. Joseph, a group of radicals showed up on the doorstep of Nora one day in the Middle East. You know what they did? They burned her house down, nearly killing her and her four daughters, the youngest of which, about four years of age, maimed for life with very serious burns. You know what her crime is? Two things. Number one, she's a born-again believer. And number two, she was caught educating her daughters beyond the age of eight. In that part of the world, in that system, that is a very serious violation. But this woman did not grow bitter. She's grown bold from all of that. And she's led nearly 40 women to faith in Christ. All of these former radicals, they follow Jesus together, but they need Bibles there in the Middle East. $5 sends a Bible, $50 sends 10. Help us send God's Word. Just call 800 Yes Word. 800 Yes Word. Or click on the Bible League banner at singingnews.com. It's the Spring Tent Revival at Noonan City Church, kicking off Sunday, May 1st through May 4th. Invite all your friends and family out to meet us at 17 First Avenue here in the metro Atlanta area. The Tent Revival, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, Reverend Gary Paris and the Noonan City Music. Monday night, 7 p.m., Pastor Randy and the Choir. Tuesday night, 7 p.m., Pastor Dorothy Mitchell and the Noonan City Music. And Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Dr. Jimmy Ellison of Noonan City Church, along with bluegrass music from Jason Horde. It's the Tent Revival, May 1st through the 4th, 7 p.m. nightly at Noonan City Church, 17 First Avenue. Come on out and meet us and enjoy yourself this week. I am Apostle Deborah Harris of Kingdom Connected Ministries International, and I am in the studio live this morning. I am coming back to you again on today to share with you uh, still yet another word that we need to be getting in this hour. Now, um, I am again with my husband. We are Uh, founders and leaders of the ministry, Kingdom Connected Ministries International. And we are thankful to God for having called us into the ministry to share and to help lead others along life's highway. And when I tell you this, it, it, it can be a job and it is a job, but it is a it is a blessed job especially because we are connected to our Lord and Savior. So we thank God on today for being in the studio and being able to share with you once again what thus said the Lord. So I am going to piggyback off of something that I shared before, and then we're going to move from there. And that is because I really feel a burden for knowing how we are to survive in this hour and in the days to come. 
We need to know how to survive. We need to know how to push forward, press forward, and even stay connected with the Lord and stay in that place where we're going to be good either way. And that just happens to be the thing that is, is driving me in this day and hour. And that is, do we know how to remain faithful? Do we know how to be stable in this hour? Uh, in this hour of craziness and chaos and confusion, do we really know how to remain stable and to press forward in the things of God? And I, I just believe that the Apostle Paul in his day, during his day, he was really sharing the same thing with the people of God. He was sharing with them and telling them, listen, it doesn't matter about the trials and the tribulations. It doesn't matter about how bad things are. But what does matter is that we remain steadfast. We remain unmovable. We remain in the uh, our, our walk with God. And, and really and truly in all of the epistles he wrote, which he, we know that he wrote over half of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul Encourage every church that he planted, every uh, group of people that he led and taught, he was encouraging them to remain faithful. Stick with God. Stay with God. Yes, you're going to go through some things, but you've got to stay with God. We know that in... First Corinthians, the uh, 15th chapter, right around about the 58, 57, 58 verse, he says to the church of Corinth, he says, listen, he says, be steadfast, be unmovable, always, always. That word always is a big word there. Always remain uh, in the work of the Lord. He says, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abiding and remaining in the work of the Lord. In other words, don't ever quit. Always, always remain steadfast, always abide in the work of the Lord. And he says, and then all of the laboring that you will do for God will never be in vain because the apostle Paul knew well, that one day we would have to stand before a risen Savior. We would have to stand before God and give an account of the things that we have done in these bodies, in the earth. And he shares that several places in the scripture as well. He, he and, and he's, he's reminding us, and here I am being led by the same Holy Spirit that led him that spoke through him, that taught him. I'm being led by the same Holy Spirit to come to you and to remind you to be faithful, to be faithful. And and this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be faithful um, in these dark and, and, um, and crazy hours. Um, he wants us to be faithful in the things of God. And I tell you what, it is definitely possible. Some people will talk themselves um, out of being faithful. They will talk themselves out of, of, of staying with God. Well, you know, it's hard. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard. I just can't do it. Well, of course not. Of course not. You cannot do it. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. God never asked us to do it alone. He asked us, he asked us to do it by staying uh, connected to him. He asked us to do it by staying uh, with him. That's what he asked. He never asked us to try to do anything on our own. That is the whole purpose of him sending Holy Spirit to us is that we allow Holy Spirit to continue 
to lead, guide, and direct us in all things, all things, not in some things, um, all things, not, not, not in a few things, but what? All things. So that's why it is, um, is, is so necessary for us in a posture of prayer, in a posture of even fasting, if, if necessary, in a posture of reading and studying the word of God, in a posture of a local church, one that is being led by men, true men and women of God. And, 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 and sadly, that has to be emphasized in this day and hour. That has to be emphasized. It's sad to say that. Um, that, But it has to be emphasized. And why am I saying that? Even David, even David, uh, the psalmist, said in Psalms 12 and 1, he says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. Where are the godly men? And, and we have to emphasize that in this day and hour. We have no choice, but we need to find ourselves in that posture in the house of God with like-minded believers holding on to the truths that are being taught and shared uh, with others. So there we go. We need to remain faithful. And it's, 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 I can never... I can never remind you, I can never share this enough. Remain faithful. And I, I'm also going to say, I'm going to ask a question. What is it that could possibly hinder or pull you away from God? What is it? What, what could possibly keep you from remaining faithful? What is it? What, what is it? Um, would it be your children? Could it be your job? Could it be uh, the lust and or the lust or the uh, affairs that we get entangled with in this world? Could it be a spouse? Uh, could it be the, the, the riches of this world? Could it be those things that would pull you off the mark, that would pull you away from a passion and a desire and a need to be connected with God? What, what is it? We, we really need to stop and ask ourselves that question. And I think it's worth doing, it's worth doing Self-inventory is worth the time that it would take to do self-inventory. You know, in our prayer time, God, show me. If, if, I'm, if I'm straying away from you, God, show me what it is that's getting my attention, that's taking too much of my time, that's holding me fast from pursuing after your heart, God. It's worth the time. It's worth the time to do self-inventory. But here's the deal. We must, we must take time out of our busy schedules each and every day to really do what God is calling us to do and really get in that place where we are going to grow closer to him in relationship. And then when we do that, we're going to be better off for having done that. Proverbs 20 and 6 says, Many a man proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy, faithful man? Um, this is very similar uh, to Psalms 12 and 1, uh, with, the, with the exception that um, lots of people proclaim their own faithfulness, but real faithfulness is hard to find. We have to understand that 
If we're going to be faithful, our faithfulness must first start within our relationship to God. How faithful are you to God? And if you're not faithful to God, then you're not going to be faithful anywhere else. Because our faithfulness to God, first of all, most of all, will strengthen us and it will empower us to be faithful in other areas. And, you know, we can start a list of things and places and and ways that we should be faithful, you know, such as we should be faithful in our marriage covenant. We should be faithful in being the priest or being a steward of our home. We can be faithful. We need. We can list being faithful on our, on our jobs. We can list being faithful in the house of God. Oh, the list can go on. But here's the deal. In all of those areas, except we're faithful to God first, we're not going to be faithful in those areas. We're not going to be faithful in the other areas because it is our faithfulness with God that will empower us to be faithful in those other areas. And, you know, uh, what I would say at this particular time is that God's, first of all, God is our creator. God is our creator. And he created us to be the men and women that we, the men and women uh, to belong to him. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say. God created us for him. Okay? And we have to understand that we're going to get it right with him first in order for everything else to work. And here's the deal. We really try to play outside of that circle and expect for our lives to be orderly, to be calm, to be peaceful, to be joyful, and to be stable outside of the circle with God. So so here's the deal. Let's imagine. Just think about a circle. Think about a circle. And within the circle, within the boundaries of the circle, it is you and God. Okay? Now, if it's you and God inside the circle, then everything that's outside of the circle will work properly. It will work out if you are in a relationship with God and you, and the two of you or, or the two of us were in the circle together because it's, it's, it, that's how it is supposed to be. God never intended for us to live this life without him. And here's the deal. In the circle, instead of it being God, in some cases, it, it will be that person by themselves. No one else is in the circle with them. They're trying to live their own life. They're trying to lead their own life. They're trying to be their own God, their own savior, their own deliverer, their own healer, their own uh, prosperity. They're trying to be all of that. But outside of the circle, then you have the trials of this life that we're sojourning. You have the pressures of this world. You have people that are foolish, full of folly, and fickle. And you're trying to deal with all of this by yourself without God. God never intended for that to be the case. And this is why I'm sharing with you this morning. We need to make sure that we are remaining connected, remaining faithful, remaining in a relationship with God so that life outside the circle will be pleasant. It will be peaceful. It will be powerful. It will be purposeful. There you go. Life outside the circle. We cannot do life without God. 
Now, some of you are already in a disagreement with that. You're like, I'm doing life. I don't have to know God. I don't even believe in a God. I'm doing life. No, let me, uh, let me uh, disappoint you. You are doing life, but it's not the life that God said that we could do. Because this is what he said. God said, he, he's, John wrote, the uh, apostle of John wrote, the apostle of John wrote, that God said, he said that the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. He says, but I have come that you would have life and that you would have it what? More abundantly. There you go, John 10th chapter, right around 10th verse. But the thief who lives outside the circle has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He says, but I have come that you would have life and you would have it more abundantly. And that's because he came. After sin crept in in the garden, God God already had his plan of redemption in place. So his plan of redemption, his plan of redemption took took place. And he said, said, listen, (laughs) I sent my only son to represent me and he's inside the circle. You can be in there with him and you can have life and have it more abundantly. I never intended for you to live below the abundant life. Never intended. But most people want to try and live in the circle by themselves. And then everything that's happening outside of the circle they're left to deal with that by themselves. God never intended. See, we have the choice to invite God in the circle or we can leave him out. And what I'm saying to you in this hour, what I'm saying to you in this hour is that we need to really, we need to really make sure, first of all, that we have invited God in the circle. And if we have invited him in the circle by accepting his son, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, if we have invited him in the circle, guess what? Then what we need to do is to maintain that relationship with him in the circle. Maintain that relationship. And I've already given you reasons, not reasons, I've already given you ways to maintain that relationship. First of all, it's going to be maintained through prayer. Secondly, through fasting if necessary. And that's something that most people don't want to hear about because they're not trying to give up any food. They're like, no, don't take my food away from me. I need to eat. Yes, you can still eat. But sometimes it's going to require that we push away from the table Sometimes it's going to require that we deny ourselves certain foods or amounts of food, okay? I'm not asking you to do the 40 days and 40 night fast. <laughs> no, that's going to be a death sentence for most people. But I'm simply saying, push away from the table, uh, Show some discipline. Restrain yourself. Now, not only fasting, not only prayer, but we have to read and study the word of God. Read and study the word of God. Very important. The word is life. The word is quickening power. The word is transformation. It's transformation. So we have to read and study the word of God. We have to be connected to a local church, a local ecclesia, a local body. We have to be connected. God never intended for you to do this alone. And when we are connected to a local body, we are able to live out God's word to be strengthened and empowered. There you go. And see, most people are like, no, 
I don't need to go to church. I can read my word at home. Okay, so uh, that's good. You should read your word at home. But you should be a part of a local body, body that so that you can carry this word out as God has intended for you to carry it out. You need to be able to put your hand to the plow. Be a part of service. Be, be a part of serving God's people. Be a part of fellowship. Fellowship is so powerful. It really is so, it's, it's more powerful than what we understand. But fellowship is very empowering, empowering. But unless we be a part of a local body and, and, and learn to fellowship with like-minded believers, we will not, never understand the importance of fellowship. So, so there you go. But. Even Solomon said, you know, I'm talking about being in the circle with God, being faithful, remaining faithful, and watching God bless you because that's what he said. He said he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Proverbs 28 and 20 says, a faithful man will abound with blessings. And this word abound, um, is simply suggesting uh, occur or existing in great quantities of numbers, uh, to be rich or well supplied, uh, to be filled. So when we are faithful, we will be rich, well supplied, and filled with God's blessings in more ways than we can imagine. That's That right there, guys, is enough to help us be faithful. Um, and you know, you, you let me let me say this because whenever a man of God, woman of God, even allow the word rich or prosperity to come out of their mouth, then most people quickly go into a place of judgment and they say, Oh my God, here we go. We why are we always talk why, why are we always talking about money? Why are we always talking about prosperity? Well, I don't know why. I don't know why others are speaking of it, but I will tell you why I will boldly proclaim it and declare it. And that is because God is a God of prosperity. When you read the scriptures and you understand the teaching of Old Testament, and the teaching uh, and, and how Jesus came to fulfill the law of Old Testament. Uh, he didn't come to do away with it. You know, no, most people have thrown the Old Testament out. And, you know, in some places, companies have printed only the New Testament. And, there, and, and, and you have some teachers that would say, we don't need the Old Testament. Well, that is a disgrace. And that is an untruth. But the truth of the matter is, the Old Testament helps us to understand who God really is and how he worked with his people, <clears throat> what he expected from his people. So when we look into Old Testament, the Old Testament teaches us that God's people were very prosperous. God's people they were very prosperous and they understood prosperity. As a matter of fact, it was a shame among God's people to not be prosperous. And God himself prospered many of his people. If we start at the beginning, we will see how he prospered Abraham. He prospered Lot. He, he prospered Jacob and all and, and Isaac. And, and they were, even Ishmael, the, the uh, bonds, bonds woman's son, he prospered him. He sent, he separated them, but he prospered him even still. So I don't want you to misunderstand that, you know, when I mention the word blessings or abounding 
and it means to be filled and rich. I don't want you to misunderstand that that is, oh, now that's false teaching. No, that's correct teaching. If you have been listening to people who has uh, pounded your ears that prosperity is not of God, then that has been the false teaching. Because read your Bible, study your Bible, understand your Bible, and you will know that God does want to bless us. And he can bless us. He will bless us. When we are connected with God, listen, let's even look back at 2020. In 2020, for everybody that was walking in a true, and I have to emphasize true, faithful relationship with God, everybody that was connected with God in a true way, these people did not worry about what had hit earth. They were more in a posture of prayer for people surrounding them than in a posture of worry. Why? Because we have been faithful to God. We have been remaining connected to God, listening to God, being led by God, being empowered by God. And God was blessing us and he was prospering us even during that time. Wow. Even during that time. And so with that being the case, that's what's going to continue to happen regardless of what happens in this earth. And see, here's the thing. With the righteous, we never lose. We will never, ever lose. The righteous is always in a winning place. We're always in a winning place. We never lose. We never, ever lose. And I'm telling you, if that does not set your soul on fire, I don't know what will. We will never lose. Can you imagine being in a game, you're a part of a team, and you don't have to worry about ever losing because you're going to always win? Wow. That is powerful. So that has to be the mindset that we have as we go into each and every day. I wake up a winner, go to bed a winner, wake up a winner, go back to bed a winner. And the cycle continues because God says a faithful man will abound with blessings. And all I'm trying to do is to get us to understand that we have to be faithful. Now, if this is another, I would call another heresy, and that is the wrong grace teaching. Oh, God loves you, and you can live any kind of way. Once you receive salvation, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay, uh, and you'll, you'll live eternally with God. No, you cannot receive Jesus and ignore holiness and sanctification, and you're going to be okay. No. No, and we understand that there's a lot, it's, there's a lot of teaching going that route. Oh, it's okay. Let's, we can still do this and we can still do that. You know, I can be married. I can have a girlfriend or I can flirt and I can do that. I can have a boyfriend. You know, I can have my husband and a sugar daddy. No, 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 no. That does not work with God. Uh, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we need to rid our minds, cleanse our minds of that kind of teaching for these last days. You know, here's the, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let me, let me do this. Let me say this because this is where we are and this is not where we should be. This is not where we should be. So, uh, the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, he says, But there were false prophets also among the people, as there, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in dam damnable heresies, even denying the Lord 
that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So here we go. Let me go back to prosperity. God is a God of prosperity. God desires that we prosper. Now, I think what the problem is with that is people run out of prosperity without salvation. You cannot have God's prosperity without salvation. You need to be saved. You need to be living right, guys. And and then God will prosper you, regardless of what the teachers are teaching. So that's what, that's, that's a truth that's being even spoken of. Listen, the enemy has taught us to deny the very thing or to reject the very thing that God wants us to understand, have, and do. So these are these truths are being even spoken of. And it says, through covetedness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John, James, Jude, all of them warned us that in, in, in their day, listen, in their day, uh, there were going to be heresies taught, but not only in their day, but in our day too. And so here we are today with Uh, truths being evil spoken of and people are being pulled away from their relationship with God in the circle. See, if you're in the circle with God, walking in, you know, being faithful, being connected, staying connected with God, you have to be so connected and you have to have your mind so made up that you're not going you're not going to let anybody pull you out of the circle. Okay? Let me give you a good example of that. Okay. Here we are, riding in the car with my friends. So one of them decide, guys, you know what? I, I think it, have y'all ever thought about robbing a bank? No, we haven't. Well, why don't we, listen, I've been thinking, I have a plan have a plan. Let's go rob the bank. And we have to be so persuaded that we will not allow that friend or, well, let me, let me take a step back. So, you know, this one particular friend make that statement and I'm in the car with about three other people. So here's another friend. Oh, wow, man, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, so it's four of us in the car. So two of us agree. Well, I'm going to say two of them. Two of them agree to rob the bank. The third person is swayed. They're going, yeah, that would be be a good idea, but no, I don't think I need to do it. Now, here I am. I'm like, no way. (laughs) No way. I have to be so persuaded in my own mind, heart, and soul to not be a part of that foolishness that I'm going to say, I don't care what y'all do. I tell you what, stop the car. (laughs) Stop the car. And here I am 12 miles from my house. Stop the car. Let me out. I'm getting out. I have to be so persuaded to not be persuaded by other influences to do the very thing that I know that I should not do. So there you go. There's the picture. We have to be so persuaded that we will not allow anybody to pull us off the mark, pull us out of the circle. I don't care what it is. We have to be convicted in our heart that God is everything to us. Everything. We have to be persuaded. And that's what I'm trying to say to 
to you this morning, beloved brothers, brothers and sisters, is that we have to be so persuaded that God will not let down. And we will not let him down. Because our ultimate goal, our ultimate goal is what? To after everything has been said and done in this earth. Because we do understand that this world is not our home. Some of us are trying to camp out here. We're trying to camp out. We Look, we're trying to build our mansions here. We're, we're not in tents. Because <laughs> you know you can take a tent down and carry it with you and go wherever. We're trying to build mansions here. And that's not the goal. The goal is for us to understand that this world is not our home and one day we're going to leave. And so... With that goal in mind, our next goal is going to be to hear God say these words. Well done, Matthew 25 and 21. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Now, have we ever thought about Jesus saying to us that we were just faithful over a few things? And then he says, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He's just simply suggesting that we need to be faithful over a few things. And that that is saying to me, this is what this is what what I'm what I'm what I'm hearing Holy Spirit saying. Do what God has called us to do. Get connected with God. Stay in the circle with God. Listen to him. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Do what he's calling you to do. Be faithful over that. Be faithful over that because you he already knew we couldn't do everything. Look, I cannot be the police chief, the fire chief, the county chief. <laughs> I can't be all the chiefs. Chiefs. I can only be one. And, and when I'm going to, if I'm going to be that one, I need to do well with that one thing. I need to be faithful. We could not even imagine the, the city police chief trying to run the county and putting out the fires at the same time. See? We would have trouble here in Newman, Georgia. And this is why it is broken up the way it's broken up. We have city, we have county, we have fire. <laughs> we can't be all three. But God says, be faithful over a few things. Do what I have called you to do and do it well. Be faithful in that area. And when I find you faithful in that area, I'm going to invite you to come into the joy of the Lord and I'm going to make you ruler over many. Why? Because you were faithful in the area that I called you to. And you did it well. And that's the problem with a lot of us. We're trying to do too much. We're trying to do, just do what you've been called to do and do it well. Because when you're doing too much, that means you're hitting and missing it. And you're confusing people and you're causing people to do things that you're causing people to slip and slide. So this verse is... Uh, about our reward or our position that we're going to receive in heaven. But we've got to find ourselves doing what is necessary here. If we're not going to be faithful here in earth and remain faithful and stay connected to God, because again, we're talking about maintaining our relationship within the circle so that we can, we can do what we need to do in this hour. And listen, and, and, and let me just hopefully make myself clear. Why am I talking about this? Because in, this, in these last dark and evil hours, somebody has to be faithful to show the presence, the power, and the position of God in the earth. So that the people that are not where they need to be 
can, can look on us as an example for them to get where they need to be. Somebody has to be faithful. Somebody has to walk with God. Listen, somebody has to walk with God so that we can bring others into the light and to the presence of God. My God, we, that's what's going to have to happen. That's, that's what's going to have to happen. Uh, God never, he's not charging us for salvation. But once we receive it, we must walk there in it. And what am I saying? Once we receive salvation, we must walk like God lives in us. That's what we're going to have to do. We must walk like God lives in us. Amen? That's how we're going to have to walk. Because if we don't walk that way, we're... We're not showing God. We're not showing God who we are in him. We're not showing him who we are in him. And and that has to be, that has to be the thing that happens. It, that has to be what happens. Uh, we've got to show others um, who we are. We've got to show others who we are. Because God has done great things for us. Wherein we are glad. Um, and the only way that we're going to show him where we are is that we walk with him and do the things that he has called us to do. I tell you what, this is so powerful. We've got to learn to walk with God like he has called us to walk with him. We've got to learn. And and, and listen, I, this is what I want to share with you. In 1 John 2, 4 and 6, the Apostle John in the Epistles of John and this was when he was on the Isle of Patmos and God was really dealing with him. And he was telling him, um, he not, 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 I'm sorry, he was not on the Isle of Patmos, but God was t- dealing with the Apostle John. And I really believe that he was preparing him and getting him ready for what he was going to show him when he ended up on the Isle of Patmos. In 1 John 2, 4 through 6, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And he that saith, he abideth alt himself. This is the key verse right here. If we are in the circle, with God. It says that he that saith he abideth in the circle with God alt himself also so to walk even as he walketh. So if we say that we're abiding with God, we should walk as, as God walks within us, as Jesus walked. You know, being faithful, loving, serving. You know, Jesus did serve. I mean, he did the work of the one that sent him. He did. And Hebrews uh, 13 and 21 says that God is able to make us perfect, complete in every good work to do his will. Working in us. That which is well-pleasing, working in us, that which is well-pleasing, in whom be glory forever and ever. God is able to do that in us. There's no reason for us to try to do it on our own. But God will do it in us, and God will do it through us. So that's, that's why we have to be strengthened 
in God. We have to be strengthened in God. And then God goes on to say, he goes on to say in uh, Hebrews 6 and 10, he says that he's not unrighteous to forget our labor, to get our, <laughs> he's, not un, he's not unrighteous to forget our work. That work and the labor of love showed towards his name. So when we're being faithful, God is not going to forget. He says, uh, the, the, lay, the work and the labor of love shown, shown towards his name to our brothers and sisters in that we have ministered and we do minister. Hebrews 6 and 10. God is not unrighteous to forget our labor, our work and our labor of love. Um, shown towards his name with the saints. He's not, he's not unrighteous to forget. So whatever it is that we're doing, whatever it is that we need to do, God is not going to forget. But we've got to become faithful men and women of God in this hour. We've got to remain connected with God. We've got to stay connected with God. And when we, are, when we do that, we're going to be the better for having done it. We're going to be the better for having done it. We're going to be the better. Um, and I tell you what, I don't know about you all as we get ready to bring this broadcast to a close. I don't know about you all, but I tell you what, there is nothing more empowering, nothing more blessed, nothing more encouraging and suitable for me. Now that I know who I am in Christ, there's no way I could go back and not be who I am today. It's such a joy. It's such a pleasure. It really is. I mean, I, I cannot emphasize how blessed I am. And let me just make sure we understand. Blessed does not mean that I'm driving a Rolls Royce and I'm living in a 16-room mansion. No. I wouldn't want it if, I, if somebody gave it to me. Try me out there, radio audience. Give me the Rolls Royce. Give me the 16-room mansion. I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to do something else with the money. But I'm, I'm not talking about that kind of blessed, but I'm talking about the joy, the peace, and the service unto my Lord, to the people of God. That's the bless I'm talking about. I'm just so blessed to be a blessing. I'm so blessed in God to be a blessing to other people. And I love every minute of it. But, beloved, I have talked and talked and talked. And um, I enjoy every moment of this. But we, you know, this broadcast has come to a close Want to give a shout out to my good friend, Pastor Jimmy Ellison and Noonan City Church for blessing me to be able to do what I do at this radio station. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And until we come to you again, be blessed, be safe, and most of all, get in the circle with God and stay in. Your extracurricular activities are enjoyable, but they could be magical. Get the heightened tingle in all the right places with Chingling. It's the better sex pill for husbands, wives, entanglements that make your sexual experience spectacular. Nice to end too early or mornings that aren't as vigorous? Chingling, baby. Put a little get up, stay up, and go harder in the bedroom where it counts. Why be good when you can be great? Make your love life magical and order yours today at ChingaBrands.com. That's C-H-I-N-G-A Brands.com.